Hangover Square. By Patrick Hamilton. Read by Julian Rind Tut. Click. Here it was again. He was walking along the cliff at Hunstanton, and it had come again. Click. Or would snap or crack describe it better. It was a noise inside his head, and yet it wasn't a noise. It was the sound which a noise makes when it abruptly ceases. It had a temporarily deafening effect. It was as though one had blown one's nose too hard, and the outer world had suddenly become dim and dead. And yet he wasn't physically deaf. It was merely that in this physical way alone could he think of what had happened in his head. It was as though a shutter had fallen over his brain. It was as though he'd been watching a film and suddenly the soundtrack had failed. The figures on the screen continued to move, to behave more or less logically, but they were figures in a new, silent, eerie world. Life had become a silent film and there was no music. By now he was used to it. He could trace it back as far as his boyhood. Then it had been nothing so sharply defined, but how well he could remember what he called his dead moods, in which he could do nothing ordinarily, think of nothing ordinarily, couldn't attend to his lessons, couldn't play. They used to rag him for it, until it at last became accepted. Old Bone was said to be in one of his dotty moods. In those days, he'd slowly slipped into and out of his dead moods. They'd not been so frequent, so sudden, so dead, so completely dividing him from his other life. They didn't arrive with this extraordinary snap. That had only been happening in the last year or so. At first he'd been disturbed about it. The thought of consulting a doctor, even. But he'd never done so. He was well enough. The thing didn't seriously inconvenience him. And there were too many other things to worry about. And now he was walking along the cliff at Hunstanton on Christmas afternoon. And the thing had happened again. He'd had Christmas dinner with his aunt. And he'd gone out, as he had told her, to walk it off. He was 34 and had a tall, strong, ungainly figure. He had a fresh red complexion and a small moustache. His eyes were big and blue and sad and slightly bloodshot with beer and smoke. He looked as though he'd been to an inferior public school and would be pleased to sell you a second-hand car. There are thousands of his sort frequenting the saloon bars of public houses all over England. His full mouth was weak, however, rather than cruel. His name was George Harvey Bone. It was only in the few moments following the sudden transition, the change from the talkie to the silent film, that he ever thought about, or indeed was conscious of, this extraordinary change which took place in his mind. Soon enough, he was watching the silent film without music, as though what he saw had always been like this. He looked at passing people, but they had no colour, vivacity, meaning. They moved like automatons, without volition. He could hear what they said, he could understand their words, he could answer them even. But he did this automatically, without having to think of what they'd said or what he was saying in return. They had no valid existence. They were not creatures experiencing pleasure or pain. There was, in fact, no pleasure or pain at all in this world. There was only his dreary, numbed, dead self. But there was something to be done. Emphatically, most emphatically, there was something to be done. So... Soon as he had recovered from the surprise of that snap in his head, he was aware that something had to be done. He couldn't think what it was at first, but this...